Hello everybody, this is Kyle and this is Jacob. In this video, they will help us understand the role of the imaginary companions in the diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder. Kyle is a little child and he has an imaginary companion. Kyle is not the only one. In fact, around 23% of the population have an imaginary companion, which is completely normal. An imaginary companion is an unreal invisible character to whom the child speaks and plays for a period of time. Having an imaginary companion is a good way to compensate the feeling of loneliness in the case of firstborn or only children, but it is also important for children who are confronted with stressful situation. For instance, something really bad happened to Kyle, a traumatic event. As a consequence, Sometimes he feels afraid. When he has this bad feeling, his imaginary companions support and reassure him. When Kyle grows up, he will not need his imaginary companion anymore because he will have enough resources to regulate his feelings. His imaginary companion will therefore disappear. Also, Jacob had a traumatic event in childhood. He also feels afraid, angry helpless and insecure. He doesn't always understand why things are as they are. Jacob creates a lot of imaginary companions in order to elaborate all these bad feelings and thoughts. Jacob has an imaginary companion to help him with his fear, one to overcome anger, another to deal with insecurity, and so on. In these situations where this emotion emerges, the imaginary companion associated with that particular emotion enters the scene and takes charge of that feeling. When Jacob grows up, his imaginary companion will still stay with him. Jacob's imaginary companions are transformed during adolescence into distinct personalities with their own identities. As an adult, Jacob will be surrounded by his autonomous alter egos, the imaginary companion who made it through the transformation process. In this case, we talk about dissociative identity disorder, which is pretty rare. In fact, only 1.5% of the population develops this disorder. Dissociation is characterized by the detachment from reality and is something that everybody could experience, for example, daydreaming. In the case of Jacob, we speak about pathological dissociation. In this instance, Jacob might behave in an unusual way, suddenly feeling as if someone else, forgetting who he really is. The question that arises now is, what is the difference between Kyle's and Jacob's imaginary companion? First of all, the number of imaginary companions is relevant. In fact, Kyle has only one imaginary companion, while Jacob has many. The second difference is that Kyle can distinguish between reality and fantasy, while Jacob, already during childhood, sometimes cannot. Finally, Kyle's imaginary companion disappears, while Jacob's imaginary companions remain with him a lifetime in form of other personalities. All this difference should make everyone aware of the role of the imaginary companion in the diagnosis of the dissociative identity disorder. However, there are very few studies on this subject and we are convinced that more research is needed. The dissociative identity disorder is an important burden in people's life. For example, they are often unable to have a job and they feel uncomfortable in some social environment. Despite the therapy, Adults often fail to re-enter society or fully recover from dissociative identity disorder. In addition, 70% of the population with this disorder tries to take their own lives, and this number should be enough to engage researchers in finding solutions to diagnose it before adulthood. More importantly, the diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder in childhood has a better prognosis and a better possibility of treatment. Therefore, we appeal together with Kyle and Jacob for more studies to be carried out on imaginary companions in order to be able to understand all their characteristics in the normal population and in a narrow range of people with dissociative identity disorder. 
This will help to easily detect them in the early childhood before these imaginary companions become autonomous personalities, which are very difficult to be cured. For more information about imaginary companion, also have a look at this video.